And this is also uh, from the anogenital genital area. Yeah, this is a perfect condyloma from low power. It's a, you know, warty, multi-lobulated, warty looking lesion. And the, the um, instead of the finger-like papilla of a typical, you know, Veruca vulgaris, usually condyloma cuminatum, uh, genital warts, usually have kind of that more rounded papillary uh, surface that looks kind of more knuckled um, uh, instead of finger shape, more like knuckle shape. Um, so that's what people like to say. But other than that, the features of condyloma are very similar to the features of a regular Veruca. You have um, parakeratosis alternating with orthokeratin. The para tends to be kind of down in these cleft areas between the papillae sometimes. And you will have, um, uh, often have dilated vessels in the papillary dermis. Like here. And ideally, I want to see coilocytes. And this particular case is loaded with coilocytes. And the coilocytes usually are located in the upper spinous or the granular layer. And see, look, they not only do they have pale or vacuolated cytoplasm, but they have really large nuclei. And sometimes they're like two nuclei sitting together inside one space, like you can kind of see right here in this guy. It's like a binucleated one. The cytoplasm can be kind of grayish or can be truly clear and vacuolated, but the nuclei are big. So for real coilocytes, that's what I want to see. These almost look kind of bubbly in this case. It's interesting. And sometimes you'll see large uh, granules in the coilocytes. It's like actually the granular layer cells that are showing the HPV change. So we call this coilocytes or HPV viral cytopathic effect means the same thing basically. And for me, I, I ideally to definitively make a diagnosis of condyloma, I like to see some good coilocytes just to be sure. I mean, because even though condyloma is not malignant, it is a sexually transmitted infection. And I don't want to label someone unnecessarily with that because there are sometimes social, um, uh, social ramifications of that. And so we always want to think about not just benign and malignant, but um, about all of those factors and uh, make sure we get the diagnosis right and not cause problems for people in that way. So if I have a lesion that I'm suspicious about condyloma, but it's not I mean, this is as good as you could actually ever ask for. It's like the most perfect condyloma ever. But if I have lesions where I'm not sure, sometimes I'll do HPV in situ hybridization, which if positive is really helpful to support condyloma. If negative, it does not totally exclude it because uh, depending on what kind of issue you use, the one I currently use, I think has six and 11 in it. I can't remember if it has any extras besides that, but it has a, a mixture of low risk. Um, but but uh, there are many, many types of HPV, right? And so um, so not all of the... Uh, not not every ish in situ hybridization will have probes for all of the different types that could possibly cause uh, genital warts um, or other types of veruca. So again, there's good condyloma. And once you see condyloma, you always want to look around and make sure there's no high-grade dysplasia H-cell. And so if I started seeing really blue basaloid atypical areas, then that would be worrisome for H-cell because you can have H-cell arise in the background of condyloma. All right, and there's more coilocytes. So, condyloma.